Hello, you guys. I'm here today with the Stacey Ryan. Oh, nice intro. Thanks. And the first thing I noticed was your hat. Thank you. So, I just got it yesterday. Yeah, tell me about the story. What's I will tell about? you about the story. It's cute. It's really, we did, um, I was on James Corden last night. Yes. Went amazing. The performance went amazing. I'm so happy. And before, um, when I was getting my hair or makeup or both done, um, my producer came in and he worked on the song that we played on the show. He helped write it, produce it. He's also just like a really, really good friend of mine. And he's like, oh, I just brought you a little gift. Just like, you know, to like, um, just like say thanks for this opportunity and just grateful that we can like live this opportunity together. And I was like, this is the best gift because one, jazz. Yes. Like, and I had, I have owned many bucket hats that have just gone missing. Like I've left them somewhere. And I was like, I need a hat because I'm gonna burn my little head and my face in this LA sun. I mean, Max. with sunscreen. But then I, it was like, it's the perfect gift at the perfect moment. Wow. So. And here's the thing. You are someone that, I mean, wants to bring jazz to the masses. In a sense, I do. Right? So this is, this is step one. Yeah. What is that all about? Like, how did you start, you know, with jazz music and just singing? And I mean, her voice, literally almost like you, if you, if you heard her voice and then you saw her, you'd be like, whoa. Because it almost. It, yeah, I get right? that. I get that. Some people are like, I would not expect you to look like that. Um, I have always been interested in like just music as a whole. Like my dad plays piano. Um, he would play music like on the stereo every weekend, like just music from like the 50s, 60s, 70s. So I like, I got in, mm. I got influenced by that like pretty young. And um, I did music like program in high school where I played the trumpet. I was in like concert band, like. You played the trumpet? I was a band kid, yeah. Did 100%. they allow you to pick out what instrument? Mm -hmm. And you chose the trumpet? Yeah. That's that's rare. I was like, I wanna I wanna play like the loud instrument at the back, you know, and um, so I did that. Then I after that I did um, the schooling in Canada, or at least in Quebec, which is the province that I grew up in. It's like really weird. You don't go right to college to get your bachelor's degree. You kind of like get an associate's degree out of high school, then you get your bachelor's degree. Oh, because our bachelor's degree is three years instead of four, and then we go to high school one less year. So it's kind of all equivalent, mm -hmm. sort of. And then that's when I started doing jazz because um, my program was jazz interpretation. Like that was like my major. That's crazy. And yeah, I just fell in love with it. And I was like, how can I write music that has all these like elements that I learned that I really love, but then also just like is pop music. Cause that's kind of like what I'm trying to do is like blend the two. So did you, sh did you like, was your voice shaped by studying jazz music or? Oh, 100%. Yeah, like I feel like when I was in high school, um, I just I, I enjoyed singing. People were like, "You have a good voice," but I don't think there was anything like super like sp not special about it. But I just hadn't found like my lane or like my style that I wanted to do. And as I discovered jazz, and also more just more music in general, that's kind of like how I fell into like this jazz pop lane, kind of. For sure. I mean, like, some would say that jazz is like a dying genre, just like classical music in general. I know. So, like, props to you for making that a point. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people um, just don't, like, they don't know jazz. And it's very daunting to try to be like, I'm going to start to like jazz music or I'm going to try because there's so much mm -hmm. that, like, you could listen to one thing. There's different types, too. There's so many different there's, types. Like, elevator jazz. There's, like, the sleep jazz. Exactly. Like you have, there's so many different facets of it. And I think trying to like, knowing nothing about it and then going into it can be like scary for a lot of people. And then people just don't want to bother and they're like, I don't really care. So if I can like bring any part of that into like music that people will listen to and maybe they'll go like look up some jazz music or go like discover new artists that they would have never found if they hadn't listened to like my jazzy pop stuff or just like regular jazz so okay so Corden so she played um on Corden's literally late night show at how many 12 hours ago yes and she told me she partied after just kidding but oh, how so tell me well I mean there's a lot to celebrate with that that's mm -hmm. a big deal oh definitely so tell me about how that went and like kind of the behind the scenes it was such a fun day and it was also like we had only practiced like 
one full day oh my God. before and like we knew the song we knew like we we just wanted to get it cleaned up and like we had extra band members come in because we really wanted to look like like this is tv like it's a big yes, deal and so we practiced i felt super confident um i got picked up in the morning at my apartment like by a driver that mm -hmm. drove me to the cbs lot which i was like oh, what is so fancy is it just like a cordon like like sticker on the back uh, I, it was just a black car okay i don't know if it was just like i don't know if it was like from cordon or just like they hired a chauffeur company which is probably what it was and the guy was like oh do you want to stop at a starbucks if i see one i'm like yes, yes. that sounds amazing and we get there um it's just like walking into like the dressing room area was just so kind of like surreal there was like a bar area couches like it was super comfy. What kind of snacks do you have back there? Oh my God, there was like, I mean, they got sandwiches for us from Uncle, Uncle Polly's? Is that what it's called? I know it's, ugh. God, I feel, I'll feel bad if it's not that, but I think it's that. And that was great. It was so good. And we had just eaten from there like the day before when we were practicing. We had ordered sandwiches from that same place. Um, and then, you know, we, we hung out, we did the sound check, everything sounded amazing. And then there was like a four hour break mm -hmm. from 12 to four. Oh my God, I've heard about this kind of break in between sound check and a show Yeah, before. it's just like, not you just wait. Yeah, like we had Surf Curse on the show and he was like, I can't stand this break in between because I'm like walking around, it like, it just makes you more you nervous. It, You're just like no, but it actually break. does. Like that whole time when just nothing was happening, like I was, it start like near like two I started going into like a hair and makeup and like getting the outfit together so it wasn't like it was a complete four hour break but just having all that like extra time definitely got me a little more nervous 100% how'd you pick your outfit because you look so good so I, it's funny that you asked that thank you um it was very like we had picked out some stuff some couple pieces and it wasn't even like 100% okay this is the outfit even like the day of like we were still had a couple pieces that we were going back and forth between and we had like a little yellow shirt maybe or a yellow like a cream colored skirt and then we had red lighting that was our so like our, our whole thing and someone who was working on the show was like oh yellow like yellow clothes under red lighting is just is really not yeah, like how would that look they said apparently like it washes out the color, doesn't make it look mm -hmm. good. And I was like, oh gosh, okay. So we kind of scrapped that. And then we had like the shirt that I was wearing and we had these big, like super high-waisted black pants, but like I just didn't like, they didn't fit me the way I wanted to. And like, I wasn't comfortable. And last minute I had grabbed like this mini skirt from my house. I was like, you know, maybe I'll wear it at the after party. Maybe I'll, and that ended up being, the and that ended up being it and like i put it on and i was like and people were like oh yeah that's it so it was kind of like trial and error but we got there and i'm really happy with it and yeah i thought i felt good about it like the whole performance i thought it went awesome do you get nervous and like what are some kind of preparation things that you do for stage do you have any rituals that you're like top secret rituals honestly know? i i don't i really just like I get nervous like right as I'm waiting to go but then as soon as I go out like it's like easy I'm on autopilot we've done this a hundred times it's just that like waiting kind of makes me a little nervous but it's not even so much like very nervous it's just like oh the anticipation of something that's about to happen like it's a big deal so I think it's just like my body just like being like okay like you're about to do something cool and big like it's not I don't know it's not like completely nervousness so that makes any sense um and as for rituals i kind of just like hang out do you warm up yeah but like it's not like i just kind of do it because i gotta do it mm -hmm. it's not like i know everyone has their ritual so it's not so much like secret but i don't know i'm trying to be like do i have any weird things that i do i think i i drank half of a gin and tonic before my performance Okay. That was good. Is that and your drink of choice? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Yeah. Really? Why? Why I, not? I love it. It's so good. I love, like, the bitter. Um, no way. Yeah. I'm a sweet tooth. Like, if it mm. doesn't have, like, I'll literally send a drink back and be like, can I please add a shot of, like, honey? Oh. Or I mean, any kind of syrup you have, Taste please. their own. Yeah. I love sweet stuff, too. Yeah. Yeah. So what about tour? 
Because... Yeah, we have lots of that coming up. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm doing two support runs um, starting February 24th with Jake Wesley Rogers. We're doing a bus tour, which I've never done before. Does that mean... Like, I'm going to be sleeping on, like, those little bunk beds in a bus. Oh, my With, like, ten other people. Because we get to... the other ten? Like, the band? Yeah, like, his band. Because, like, I'm going with just a guitarist who played with me on Corden. So it's just going to be the two of us, like, playing the shows. And then Jake, Wesley Roger, will um, play with his band. But they let us... They had space on their bus for (gasps) us. So we're going to be able to, like, be with the band and it's gonna be fun it's just like i don't know how i'm gonna uh, like how am i gonna sleep okay like it's on a moving bus and it can't be like the mattress can't be that thick you know so yeah i wonder does has anyone told you how to prepare for something like that because there's always you know there has to be one person that just like their phone has no loud, idea right exactly scrolling through tiktok it's like you know when someone know. opens their phone and just like tiktok is like, whoosh, and just like i mean yeah. that's me but uh, speaking of TikTok. Oh, speaking of TikTok. Okay. Very so influential. I one thing I wanted to know about you and TikTok was do you um and maybe it's changed over the course of your career, but do you feel like TikTok is more of an obligation or is it something that you truly enjoy kind of being a presence on social media? It starts where everyone is like, Oh, this is just a fun thing, like I'm just gonna post and be creative and like it still is. Yeah. But now the fact that you have like I have garnered an audience and that's a big way how I communicate to my audience Mm -hmm. about you know like stuff coming out shows uh new music dropping um just news like going on Corden so now you kind of have to always think of that platform as like oh I have to update my audience Mm -hmm. you know like it's an obligation it's not a heavy one you know you just have to do it so that people I like that mindset yeah because it can sometimes get a little bit especially because TikTok is so algorithm based that sometimes Like, you'll put something out and it won't get a lot of views or, like, you'll put something out that you've done a 100,000 times that always did well and then it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But that's just, like, TikTok and that's just how it is, kind of, and you have to be ready for that. And I think, I mean, I owe so much, literally, like, so much to TikTok for a lot of the, like, the opportunities that I've had, you know, and... So we're, we're, I'm learning every day about the platform, you know, and so is everyone. Um, That's true. Because so many people now, especially in this kind of, I don't want to say like generation, but like time. recently, yeah, these yeah. times have been like, they get discovered on TikTok mm-hmm. and then it goes from there, you know, like so many people are getting discovered now and it's like such a great thing. So you had, I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, your first kind of like viral moment on TikTok and it, po- it was like really popping in Asia. So, right? yeah, that was like with Fall in Love Alone, which was my first single after Don't Text Me When You're Drunk, okay. which was the big. That was like the open verse challenge at the top of last year. It was like a year ago. That video was blowing up. Put the song out, went to LA, wrote music, wrote Fall in Love Alone, um, put it out in like May. And then months later in October, it starts having its moment on TikTok in Asia. Months like later. M- months later. How does that happen? How does that work? I honestly don't really know. Like someone just uploaded a black a screen. Fast version, huh? And yes, that yes. too. Like that definitely did help. What's up with that in TikTok? Like everyone just loves like the. I mean, it's kind of cool. I think it's just kind of because it gives you some like I don't know some like happy feeling because you hear a song that you like know of you've heard before, but it's just like sped up. It's more energy. And I remember thinking to myself, I was like, oh, I really want someone to make one of these for my song. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I was seeing them going around, you know. And then someone did. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like, awesome. And um, then it just started, like, it started taking off. Like, people were doing challenges. People were covering it. Uh, It got to number one on the Billboard charts in Indonesia. That's crazy. Which is, like. Indonesia. Yeah. That's far. And I got to go out there last year. Because of all this that was happening, I flew to, um, we started in Indonesia. I did like performances, content creation, press conferences. Like it was, it was a work trip, but I mean, it was still like super fun because it was, I was able to go to a part of the world that I've never, you know, been to. Or yeah, I don't thought. know anyone who's ever been to Indonesia. What was that like when you first stepped off the plane? I, I was just kind of very open. Like I didn't know what to expect because yeah. I had never even like, I hadn't seen a lot. Like, of course I knew 
you know, about those kind like those countries, but I had never put much more thought into it than that. So I was just kind of open mind, like ready to, you know, like explore and meet everyone. And everyone was amazing. The trip went like so well. People were so excited that I came out because, you know, like, like you said, it's really far. Yes. And to get to go out there, like it's a it's a big thing. It's not just like a four hour plane ride. And mm -hmm. so I think they were like, oh, that's cool that like she saw the opportunity yeah. and she just grabbed it and like came out here and I got to perform with so many cool people. Uh, we also went to Singapore and the Philippines and like, cause the song was doing really well there too. And it was like, see, like none of that wouldn't have happened without TikTok. And then we're back mm -hmm. and like, it's all like related. I have to ask something because I was thinking about this for like the past 10 minutes. So she has the most beautiful skin. I don't know if we can do a close up. Oh my God. On some real girl, we're gonna get into girl talk now mode. Literally, it's what's your all, routine? Okay, so right now I was about to be like, wow, oh, that's really, you know what? I am really insecure about my skin. So I'm really like, cause I have no, very, like I have undiagnosed rosacea and like very red, very easily sensitive. irritable sensitive. skin. Yeah. And I like I'll just like scratch my face and it'll be like red and someone's like oh my god did you like get hit in the face I'm like no uh -huh. and so this and I've been really working on my routine so I feel and I feel like I've been noticing some changes so mm -hmm. I'm really glad you pointed it out um, I wash my face with like CeraVe like a salicylic mm -hmm. acid just like a, a cleanser like that it bubbles up and then I wash my face and then I put Cera it's all CeraVe <laughs> CeraVe like Are a you serum for real? with hyaluronic acid. And then moisturizer, and that's it. That really? I think it's, it? it's helping my texture a lot. The redness, I'm not so sure. I did where I'm wearing a little bit of like, B, like um, uh, uh, not tainted. What's the word? BB cream. Tinted. Yeah, BB, BB cream. Yes, so it's yes. a little like if I took it off, my face would be a little more red. But I have really been working on my skin. So like, that's like I'm a really, really like. It's like a simple regimen, uh, you know. Yeah, it's wow. three things. It's just three Face things. wash, serum, and then moisturizer. And I've tried like so many things. Yes, girls have like sometimes 20 steps. Exactly, and I was like, I remember like a company sent me some free skincare a while ago. They're at Target, you know Coco Kind? They come in really cute like colored packaging. They're really cute and they yeah. sent me a bunch of stuff and I used it and I was like, this is cool. But it was like seven steps. Um, yeah, and I was like, yeah, yeah. I, feel, I don't know if I need all that. And like, is it actually working? And I was like, it's so hard to go find a dermatologist that you can like get an appointment with. It's super expensive. Because if I had like, if someone was like, hey, you have rosacea, they could prescribe me a cream and then my face wouldn't be red all the time. Yeah. But it's just difficult. So I'm trying like on my own to see if I, there's anything by doing a regular routine. Because I would just like... I think that's the key. Being consistent, consistent is so important. And I, I think I'm starting to actually like see results, so I'm really happy. Wow. I mean, your skin's amazing too. Oh, girl. I was noticing I was like... <laughs> it's like so like... It looks moisturized. <gasps> You're glowy. I use Glossier. So the, the tinted I... moisturizer. Started... I bought a couple products from Glossier and I really, really like them. Yes. So, so you said the tinted moisturizer? Yes. That sounds like something I would like because it's like the last step of your routine <laughs> because the moisturizer, but then it's tinted. Yeah. So it gives you a little like coverage, kind of. Sometimes I sit on the couch and like people, we just forget that there's, you know. Right. We're like, oh, sorry. We've been talking about uh, hey random guys, makeup oh, we here. for like <laughs> 10, 10 minutes. But back to girl talk. So yes. let's talk about the songs mm -hmm. really quick. Yes. Okay. The songs are about someone or some people. So, I love this question. I really do. I can't so, help. right. So, Don't Text Me When You're Drunk is about someone. Yes. Um, Fall in Love Alone is about someone. Over Tonight is not about someone. Is it the same someone? It's two different people. In Fall in Love Alone and Don't Text Me When You're Drunk. Playa. But, oh, uh, I mean, Let's go. one of the songs is about, like, oh, I hope you have the same feelings as me. And the other one is like, don't text me when you're drunk because you say stupid crap. Mm -hmm. So... Not the same. One person I was like, oh, I don't really like that you did that. And the other person was like, please like me the way I oh. like you. Have you ever sent a drunk text? Oh, all the time. <gasps> but really, there's different levels because I, the whole song is about don't text like someone, something you'll regret, something that you shouldn't say, something that you don't mean. You know, like if you're a little tipsy and you're texting your friend, you're like, I love you so much. I'm so glad you're my friend. Very acceptable drunk text. Do those every night. Uh, you have my permission 
which you don't need, but you have it. Mm-hmm. And but it's just like when you do something when you're like, because I wrote the song about this guy who like kind of went back and forth because he's like I don't want a relationship and I was like that's fine like thank you for telling me and then he's like oh wait but like I'm just disappointed that you ended things and I'm like you we didn't want the same thing why yeah. are you mad and he's like oh like, I don't know that's the kind of junk text that I don't what is your type um oh, you know what it has yeah. changed recently it like I used to be I mean, musicians, first and foremost, definitely. <gasps> really? Oh, 100%. Oh, I have never man. not dated a musician. Could be. But isn't it kind of like, don't you think it, like, is it, it would be hard to, like, date yourself because, like, it's crazy schedules. So, but you know musicians also, like, can relate and they know because mm-hmm. I have crazy schedules. So, if I'm also, like, dating someone who understands that, you know, mm-hmm. they may not have the same crazy schedule, but they know That's why I'm always gone, whatever. But my life has been so busy right now. Like, yeah, what is it like just dating in general? In it's, this it's, crazy uh, time? it's a void. There's nothing. <gasps> like, I mean, I went home for Christmas, so I was just spending time with my, like, my family, my friends. Then I come back, and I'm like leaving in a month to go on tour. So it's like I'm just kind of open to whoever and whatever at any time. And I'm not like kind of looking for it. I'm just because I'm so busy. So I don't have a I don't have a like a ranking or a roster because there's just like no there's like no one, but I'm also like not I'm just kind of taking life as it comes you know and and whoever it is needs to be understanding that like right 100%, now 100%. your career will always be first and that's gonna be a big thing for any relationship that I ever get into mm-hmm. because you know I'm always gonna be here there and everywhere so that's gonna make it really difficult for me in the future which sucks but you know it's my job is what I've always wanted to do so and whenever I find the right person it'll they'll understand wow hopefully she's so hopefully I don't. she's so like emotionally intelligent and mature it's so cool right? thanks wow you're just like well how do you stay grounded through all this you know what I'm saying that has been probably the biggest challenge in like um, being in this career because I am like a huge homebody. I love to be at home. I love to spend time by myself mm-hmm. and like being on the road and like you're always with someone. You never have time to like take a breath for yourself, you know, like to have a minute or even like um, like take a nap or stuff. And then you're always constantly moving, living out of a suitcase, which I found like that's the hardest, has been the hardest thing. And so I'm really now like grateful for these moments where I get to like be in one spot whether it's like when I was back home for a month for Christmas like that felt really good now I've been here for a couple weeks and it feels so good like I love being like actually grounded like physically Mm -hmm. in one spot but I've done a lot of like adapting I've done a lot of learning you know throughout all this to like be more comfortable like always traveling because it's a huge part of like what I do Mm -hmm. and I think I've like I think I'm starting to like you know, like just accept it more and not feel as like, um, bombarded. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, when I'm out on the road, I'll show me like, okay, we're on the road, we're doing it, you know, focus on what you have to do. And then when you get home, like I'll, like I'll appreciate it that much more just cause I was like, mm-hmm. I was gone. So it's a lot. It is a lot. That's probably been like the biggest thing that I've had to like, I don't want to say overcome cause it's always going to be there. To, yeah, right? definitely adapt to for sure. Um, I read somewhere that one of your biggest dreams was to sing Backup for Adele. Is this true? I, you know what's funny? I think I just said that recently. I don't know. I think like I was talking to someone and I was always like, I was ready to sing. Like before I became what I am now, whatever that is, um, I always was like, I just want to be in the industry. Like, I want to, whatever it may be, I could just, like, be a studio musician. Like, I could just sing backup for people in studios for their albums. Like, go on a tour and sing backup. Like, that was kind of something I always wanted to do. Because I wasn't the main focus. Like, I could have just, like, done what I wanted to do. Like, met a bunch of cool people and then just, like, like, chill and just sing backup vocals. You know, because that sounds... It's, it's it fun. does sound pretty cool, especially if it's for someone like Adele. So, it's someone like, super cool. And pretty tight. Yeah. So I never got to do that. I mean, never say never. It's not too late. Maybe I'll, one day Adele will be like, oh my God, I saw you on Corden. Ah! <laughs> Would love to hear you sing some backup for me. And I'll be like, oh, okay. Oh, uh, man. Let me come right over. But <laughs> I'd be super open. Adele, call me. So, yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Of course. I feel like if we could just like turn off the camera and just like we'll keep going and we didn't even like. We're probably going to, yeah, just be sitting yeah. here. Yeah. So. You guys are going to miss all the, the behind the scenes. The tea. I'm kidding. There's literally, we just, we laid it out all as the camera was rolling. Yes. You saw all of it. Well, everybody, Stacy Wright. Oh. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I'll come back in like two months and then we'll talk about, oh, after my tour, I'll come back and we'll spill all the bus, the tour bus oh my tea. God. Yes. I would love that. Amazing. Amazing.